Man, if that's if that's not a Motley Crew, I don't know what is. I mean, is this what is this is this what what IndyCar has in store for it? Like when we Elio retires and Tony retires and you know Scott retires, is this what's left? You poor people. This is terrible. This is this is funny, man. I mean, this is uh, it's funny looking at this picture because you know I just look at this and see a couple of my like good buddies. I just see a couple of good friends and. Every once in a while, you got to kind of pinch yourself and be like, "Man, we get to go race Indy cars together." It's uh, it's it's a pretty cool thing, you know. We we would be friends if we were all in different jobs, and none of them as cool as this, you know. But the fact that three guys that get along as well as we do, in some variation or another, have all lived together, uh, you know, we get to strap up every every Sunday and, and go race the coolest cars in the world around some of the best tracks on earth. This is one of many. I, there, are, there are way more compromising photos of the three of us. I'm glad those didn't come up. <laughs> the birth of Manica. I remember this well. I remember freaking out backstage before the intros because I had it. I had this wig, but I didn't know if it was going to get taken the wrong way. You know, like I obviously meant it in the like lightest heart, lightest heartest, light hardest way. And I had it, and I was back and forth on whether or not I should uh, I should do it. And I think it was Dario that finally talked me into it. I think he was the one that was like, "You should absolutely do it." And so I did, and it worked out well. It was a nice little way to kind of pass the torch, you know. Following her in uh, in that car in that role was was a big ass, but we had some fun with it. Boom. Yeah, I don't remember this one. But I remember what came after this one. It's weird. I mean, you know, I've seen, I've seen footage of the crash, you know, a thousand times or whatever. But every once in a while, you see either the the clip again or or some still photo of it. And it's just like the the magnitude of the hit was just so big when you like when you see it in slow motion or you see you know a still with just this debris field behind you. It's crazy to think that we've come to a place in, in IndyCar racing where you can survive something like this, you know? I mean, my injury aside, that was a very, you know, freak set of circumstances. With that one little thing not happening, I, I would have walked away from that, like actually, which is just, it's just crazy to think. You know, you look at Scott's accident at the Speedway this year or, or Sebastian's and the fact that uh, we come out relatively unscathed from things like this just is such a testament to all the people that have put so much time and energy and money and everything into making these things as safe as possible. Not my not my best day, but you know, definitely uh, definitely one that changed me in a lot of ways and a lot of ways for the better. So it's uh, it's an important thing to remember. This one was cool. I mean, that race has always meant a lot to me. It was. A lot of firsts for me. My first kind of like semi-pro race in Formula Atlantic back in the day was there. My first Atlantic podium was there that race. My first lights win was there. My first IndyCar podium was there. And it's just one of the oldest, you know, most historic venues that we run at. And so, you know, that was always one that was on the bucket list to win. So the fact that we did that and, you know, first time in, in Winter Circle after, uh, after what happened in 2015, it was, uh, this was a special day for sure. Hopefully not the last time we go to Victory Lane in the old LBC. Wiki Bobby. This was cool. I don't know why. I don't know why I look so serious in this photo. I'm not sure if I'm like trying to look like that or they just caught me at a weird moment because it's very un me. But this was cool, man. I mean, you know, to to have a kid that you grew up with, you know, you've known since he was 12. We were both kids, we were racing go-karts, we both had these big dreams of you know, being racing drivers and both kind of went very different paths to get there, but our professionals running at the top, running at the front, and uh, it, it's crazy that, that two kids from the same group both ended up being pros. That's, that's pretty rare in itself. And this whole thing came about over, uh, over New Year's, the year before. We've been working on this for almost a year and uh, we were we were coming up with some interesting ideas over one or two fruit punches, and 
you know, we, we kind of like crafted this plan on how to maybe make this work one day. And somehow us two bozos actually managed to pull it off. I mean, there were obviously a lot of people involved and uh, had to go through a lot of people, but you know, we, the one, we were the ones that had to kind of, you know, force the issue, so to speak, and, uh, and go to the right people and try and make it happen. And, you know, for Robbie, it was a dream to get to race an IndyCar or drive an IndyCar at least. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe we'll see him in the series at some point. I would love that. And then, you know, I got to go over and drive his car. But just the fact that two kids, you know, grew up, you know, picking their noses and racing go-karts together end up at the top of, top of the motorsports food chain and get to share that with each other is pretty cool. It kind of sucked for him because he got to go to Sebring, Florida, and I got to go to Rome. So like, I feel like I feel like I actually I actually came out on top of that one. Gee, you know it's uh, it was cool. I got the chance to spend some time with uh, with Greg's dad, Rick, at the race in Toronto this year. He uh, he came out. He has some friends in in town, and uh, I'd kind of, I'd been in touch with him. I talked to him before, and you know we text back and forth every once in a while. But it's actually you know meet the man in person and it's cool. I mean, this guy, he meant a lot. He was a lot of the reason why I wanted to do this and, you know, try and act the way that I act and conduct myself in a certain way. So thank you, Greg. Brazil. Yes. This was a fun one. It was cool. It was cool being up there with Marco. Um, you know, he, uh, he and I had become really good friends at this point, and it's always fun, you know, being up on a podium with buddies of yours. And I'll tell you, man, this one was this one was fun. It was only a couple races after my first win. You know, we got our second, and it was in pretty dramatic style with the the last lap pass on Takuma, last corner pass on Takuma. I was gonna be really angry if we didn't win this race because, and I'll just I'll just I'm just, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I mean, Takuma was blocking. He was blocking very clearly against the rules, and yet race control had really no inkling whatsoever no inclination to uh to do anything about it and it was it was pretty disappointing if i'm honest and uh i had tried you know passing him on the inside and he basically tried to put me in the wall so i tried passing him on the outside in that last corner the lap before and you know he did kind of what you would do he overshot the corner and tried to drive me into the wall i knew i only had you know one chance left i had an overtake he didn't going into that last corner when i hit it he didn't defend, so I thought I was good, and I moved to the inside, and he just completely chopped me, and again, put me into the wall. I had to hit the brakes on the straightaway, the top of six gear, to avoid a collision, and cut back over to the outside, and I thought, if I try the outside here, he's just gonna do the exact same thing again, but if I make him think I'm gonna try the outside, maybe he'll go deep again, and I can kind of do the old high-low, and it worked. You know, he got a little bit of brake lock going into the corner and left the door open just enough, and I made sure once I was on the inside, I drove him all the way out to the wall, and, uh, and and got the win, so it was cool. I mean, to, uh, y you see things like that on you know highlight reels, and you always kind of want to be part of something like that. So it's cool to have a, a race that we won, leading about I think 400 feet was all we actually led in that race, but it was the 400 feet that mattered.